Do you remember a while back when we discussed the Middle East situation, specifically highlighting the Kurds? This is undeniably the first time we shed light on the significance of the Kurds amid all these complex dynamics. While many were still trying to grasp the intricacies, we were the first to emphasize the importance of the Kurds in the Middle East. We pointed out that amid the integration of various powers in the region by the CCP, including Turkey, Persia, Arab states, and even Russia, the natural allies of the United States and Israel were the Kurds. With a population of 30 million in the region, the Kurds have long been crucial allies of the United States, consistently seeking independence. Fast forward to recent events, Turkey launched airstrikes on the Kurdish region in its territory, and now Iran as confirmed by Ayatollah Khamenei himself, carried out a missile strike from Iran to the Kurdish region in Iraq. The target was the wealthiest family in the Kurdish region, the Zedis in Erbil. Two ballistic missiles directly hit their residence, resulting in casualties. Why did this happen? Iran alleges that the Zedi family collaborated with Israel's Mossad and provided intelligence to the United States, claiming their home served as an intelligence center for Mossad. Iran links them to the January Sa'ad terrorist attack and justifies the missile strike on these grounds. This incident has significant implications. It has escalated the involvement of the Kurds directly into the conflict. Previously, the support for the Kurds was more discreet, but now, with such a publicized attack, the 30 million Kurds find themselves thrust into the forefront of the battlefield. We had forewarned about this, emphasizing the intelligence aspect. Iran's direct missile launch from its own territory into Iraq signifies a breach of sovereignty. Moreover, the target was the Kurdish region, particularly Erbil, the capital of the northern Kurdish region in Iraq. In essence, what we're witnessing is a sovereign Iraq being directly attacked by Iran and within Iraq is the Kurdish region taking the heat. Erbil has become the focal point of the 2024 Erbil attack, and this development signifies a major shift in the Middle East dynamics that we had anticipated. And then the third point, it targets another affluent figure in the local scene. This individual, the head of the Falcon Group, boasts assets worth 2.3 yuan billion. His company is a prominent player globally, engaged in the oil industry and real estate, with a notable presence even in New York. The 2024 Erbil attack directed two ballistic missiles straight at his residence. The concept of ballistic missiles is something you can understand by watching online videos. There's virtually no time to react. Moving on to the fourth point, the United States has stated its support for Iraq's sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity. In essence, this statement comes after the direct targeting of the wealthiest individual. In Iraq, the leader, or one might say, the equivalent of a leader in the Kurdish region. This individual represents the entire leadership of the Kurdish region and eliminating him with ballistic missiles is a significant move. It's akin to targeting the most influential figure among the Kurds, comparable to the stature of a prominent leader among the Jewish people in Israel. This act raises concerns about potential escalations. Just think about it if the Kurds, who are considered natural allies of the United States, have their leader eliminated with ballistic missiles, what kind of escalation might follow? Additionally, Iran has targeted the under-construction U.S. consulate and international airport in the Kurdish region, though no casualties were reported. We've emphasized before that the Kurds, 
being essential allies for the U.S. and Israel, play a vital role in the Middle East due to their linguistic diversity. With millions of Kurds in Iran, Iraq, and beyond, Iran's actions have ignited a powder cake in the Kurdish community. This marks a significant upgrade, as Iran has millions of Kurds within its borders. Now the U.S. finds itself in a position analogous to its historical support for the Jewish people. Will the Kurds receive similar support from the U.S.? Will Israel become involved? The individual targeted by Iran is claimed to be a senior Kurdish intelligence official suggesting that his family serves as a key intelligence base for Mossad. Iran's use of such a method indicates that a ground operation in the Kurdish region might not be feasible for them, given the strong Kurdish presence and support. Think about the magnitude of this situation, a full-scale escalation with millions of Kurds in Iran, Iraq, and beyond affected by Iran's actions. It poses a complex geopolitical scenario, and the Kurds, having been crucial intelligence sources for the U.S., are now thrust into the forefront of a potential conflict. He is a wealthy individual, and his security measures are undoubtedly layered. However, the use of missiles caught him off guard. He needed to confirm several factors before such an attack could take place. Firstly, the target, Zidane, must be at home with intelligence present. Secondly, the intelligence must not be in the basement but rather in a place accessible, like the living room. Thirdly, the information must be transmitted immediately to prompt the attack. Lastly, the decision to use missiles is significant as it would cause diplomatic and moral condemnation. Despite this, Iran perceives Zidane, the Kurdish tycoon, as highly important. Zidane is closely associated with the ruling Barzani family, leading major real estate projects in Kurdish regions. His ties with Israel make him a significant figure. Iran's actions have indeed ignited a powder keg, turning what was once covert into an overt confrontation. Kurds are not confined to Iraq. They exist in Turkey and Iran as well. Due to the lack of an independent sovereign state, Kurds can deploy patriot air defense systems and are vulnerable, as seen in the Iranian incursion into Iraq. Iraq's sovereignty has been violated by Iran and Turkey has bombed the Kurdish region in northern Syria. The Kurds are caught in a complex geopolitical situation, lacking a sovereign state to protect them. This highlights the vulnerability of the Kurds in the face of regional conflicts. Looking ahead, if there's any ground force mobilized against Iran, Israel might not directly intervene due to various constraints. However, if the Kurds unite and arm themselves, the dynamics change. With a population of 30 million, the Kurds are the fourth largest ethnic group in the Middle East. They practice Islam, making them a potent force. Today marks the creation of a significant event in Wikipedia, the 2024 Erbil attack. This event on January 15 is monumental and has the potential to reshape the entire Middle East. The Kurds, with their significant population and strategic importance, could indeed play a crucial role in altering the dynamics of the region. Because of Iran's provocation of ethnic hatred among the Kurds, this animosity is bound to escalate rapidly in the future. So this time, just think about it. Even the wealthiest Kurdish individual who supports the U.S. and Israel couldn't ensure the safety of his own family. Consider the implications of being the wealthiest. It suggests having substantial security measures, bulletproof cars, armed guards. Yet, in that region, even those precautions are insufficient. Who would dare to assist the U.S. and Israel next? In the Middle East, 
logic dictates that if even the wealthiest are not safe, who will risk supporting the U.S. and Israel? Iran's use of missiles sends a terrifying message. Your wealth won't protect you. We can directly strike with missiles. This poses a significant challenge for both Israel and the U.S., opening a situation where direct retaliation against Iran becomes an absolute breach of bottom lines. Iran's audacity stems from their confidence that even the highly defended residents of the wealthiest Kurdish individual, Zidin, with layers of security, can be targeted with missiles. It indicates that missile defenses are insufficient and Iran is willing to cross any line. Following such an attack, Kurds would surely consult with the U.S. and Israel. If they can't guarantee Kurdish safety, the willingness to collaborate diminishes. The Kurds play a vital role in the Middle East as intelligence sources and without their support, the U.S. faces a significant intelligence gap. Looking forward, if Iran's actions lead to Kurds reconsidering their support, it would indeed create a geopolitical shift. The key aspect here is the Kurdish aspiration for independence. Now it remains to be seen how Iraq responds, and the U.S. has already expressed a strong condemnation through the Prime Minister of the Kurdistan region. The 2024 Erbil attack has intensified the geopolitical situation, urging international partners not to remain silent in the face of such cruel attacks on innocent Kurdish. People, let me explain again where Kurdistan is situated. It is in the northern part of Iraq, specifically adjacent to Iran. In this region, predominantly populated by Kurds, we find the Kurdish Prime Minister, Barzani, who is akin to a governor in the U.S. Now we await the response from the Baghdad federal government. If there's no response, Kurdistan might take independent action. This means they could potentially arm themselves, similar to Israel. The Kurds, with a quick mobilization of several hundred thousand or even a million troops, can easily secure the entire Kurdish region. What they seek is a legitimate course of action. So in the aftermath of the 2024 Erbil attack, if Kurdistan considers re-evaluating its support, it would bring about a geopolitical shift. The crucial element here is the Kurdish aspiration for independence. The response from the Iraqi government is awaited, and the U.S. has already strongly condemned the attack by the Prime Minister of the Kurdistan region. The situation has intensified geopolitically, urging international partners not to remain silent in the face of such cruel attacks on innocent Kurdish people. Now let's revisit the U.S. presence in Iraq. A while back, the Prime Minister of the Federal Government in Iraq expressed the desire to expel U.S. military bases. Although Iraq operates under a federal government, the first Prime Minister was Kurdish. Over time, due to Iranian and Chinese influence, the Kurds were gradually marginalized. Despite assisting the U.S. in ousting Saddam during Iraq's war, the Kurds felt abandoned. When the U.S. withdrew its troops in 2019, this move was viewed as a betrayal, exposing the Kurds to widespread slaughter, especially by Turkey. Fast forward to the present, the situation has changed. The Iraqi government is explicitly expressing anti-U.S. sentiments, calling for the expulsion of U.S. military bases. This underscores the complex dynamics in the Middle East, where each party has its interests intertwined with others. The potential escalation in Kurdistan, demanding armed forces, could prompt the U.S. and Israel to arm the entire Kurdish region, creating a strategic pressure point from both the north and the south. 
In the larger context, if the Chinese Communist Party CCP successfully establishes control over other regions, the situation in the Middle East will become even more intricate. Notably, the Kurds do not fall under the Arab League. If the Kurds, with their significant force, get involved, it would pose a considerable challenge for Iran and Turkey, making their situations challenging to handle. Now, to put it plainly, what is being sought here is a legal foundation. Previously, the U.S. did not support the Kurds in fostering the vision in the Middle East. It's akin to the previous stance on Taiwan, where the U.S. didn't support Taiwanese independence. However, the opportunity has now presented itself, and this is the current situation. In essence, the crucial aspect to note is the flexibility and the resilience of the U.S. strategy. This strategic setup has the potential to swiftly become a frontline force when necessary. Amidst the complexities, China, Russia, and Iran perceive the current situation in the Middle East. As mentioned yesterday, the CCP is aligning with the Arab League Secretariat, advocating for Palestinian independence and supporting groups like Hamas, gaining traction. There's also an article discussing how long the Houthi forces can withstand U.S. airstrikes. This implies that the Houthi armed forces are well equipped to resist significant firepower, rendering the U.S. hesitant to engage in multiple rounds of missile attacks or aerial strikes. Essentially, it is the CCP orchestrating armed groups in this scenario. This brings us to the point that if the U.S. lacks allies in the entire Middle East, conducting military operations becomes challenging. After the Iraq war, even the Iraqi government is considering expelling U.S. forces. Saudi Arabia refrains from involvement in the U.S. action against the houses and the we urges the U.S. to avoid escalating tensions. Jordan and Egypt, with limited strengths, may not actively participate. The situation leaves the U.S. heavily reliant on specific allies in the region. In the grand scheme of things, if the CCP successfully solidifies control in other regions, the Middle East will become even more intricate. Notably, the Kurds don't fall under the Arab League, and their significant force poses a challenge to Iran and Turkey. The geopolitical landscape is evolving, and the response to the 2024 Erbil attack could trigger a re-evaluation of alliances in the Middle East. The U.S. needs specific allies in the region to navigate the intricate diplomatic landscape effectively. The flexibility in U.S. strategy allows for adaptability to emerging situations, ensuring a resilient geopolitical positioning. Currently in Iran, there is a strategic decision to escalate tensions, even if it means triggering a comprehensive escalation of the situation. The recent attack in Erbil is essentially a demonstration of Iran's willingness to resort to extreme measures. In essence, it serves as a deterrent, conveying a clear message to the Kurds. Any assistance to the United States or Israel will not be tolerated. Iran wants to showcase its capability to strike as the wealthiest individuals among the Kurds, delivering a message of intimidation. This involves targeting not only the primary figure but also emphasizing the pervasive influence of Iranian intelligence personnel around the targeted individual. The aim is to instill fear among potential supporters, discouraging them from aiding the U.S. and Israel. By escalating tensions, Iran intends to dissuade external parties from providing support to its adversaries. This strategic move sends a signal that anyone assisting the U.S. and Israel may face severe consequences.
Consequently, it is expected that any subsequent actions will stimulate further internal escalations within Iran. This approach is not isolated to the Middle East. The repercussions of the 2024 Erbil attack are likely to extend to other regions such as the Philippines, the Taiwan Strait, and the East China Sea. The upcoming elections in Taiwan will likely be a pivotal point marking the commencement of various actions. The accelerated pace of development since the beginning of 2024 hours has surpassed the previous expectations, and Iran's recent move against the Kurds is a clear indication of the rapidly evolving geopolitical landscape. The situation is complex, and the speed of escalation is noteworthy. Iran's actions in targeting the Kurds have set off a chain reaction, prompting internal and external responses. The 2024 scenario is unfolding at an unprecedented pace, reshaping alliances and setting the stage for broader geopolitical shifts. The strategic importance of the Kurds in the Middle East has been highlighted and their potential alignment with the U.S. and Israel could reshape the entire dynamic of the region. As the dust settles over the 2024 Erbil attack, the Middle East finds itself on the brink of a transformative period characterized by heightened tensions and geopolitical realignments. Iran's missile strike in Erbil has ignited a regional powder keg, showcasing the intricate dynamics at play. The attack on the Kurdish figurehead, a symbol of wealth and influence, serves as a stark warning to potential allies of the U.S. and Israel. The repercussions extend beyond the borders, influencing global affairs and setting the stage for unforeseen developments. If you found this video insightful in unraveling the complexities surrounding the 2024 bill attack and the ensuing geopolitical implications, please take a moment to like, share, and obliterate that subscribe button. Stay connected for the latest updates on the ever-evolving landscape of international relations. This is Capture the Intelligence providing you with unparalleled insights into the geopolitical chessboard. Stay informed, stay engaged, and witness the unfolding narrative shaping our world in 2024. A real attack.